Hello everyone, today we will be seeing what's inside HC Digital Watch that you might have seen before. Uh, I've probably worn it in many of my videos. It's my normal watch, I've had it for something like 7 years. And it's just a cheap Casio, maybe $11. Uh, it has a metal back plate, and uh, I've already removed the screws, so we can lift off the back plate. And if we look on the bottom side of the back plate, you have the weird H24. I don't think there's a date code because this is not like the fourth week of 1982 or something. And besides, if it did say that it was 0482 and it's not made in 2024, this, like I said, this thing's something like seven years old. And I have no idea what this means. Maybe it's a serial number. But we have this little circle over here. This is a piezoelectric disc. If I was to put this on and then press this button, which toggles between the watch's modes, it makes some little beeps as I do so, but if I remove the top, it doesn't do anything. This is the little piezoelectric buzzer that controls all of the audio, like the alarm and the beeping and all the and all the jazz. But if I pot, if I shake it, if I turn it upside down and shake it, well, maybe with a little bit of help for my fingers. I can pull the watch module straight out. It looks like it's held together with a some plastic clips, and I don't really feel like destroying it. So instead, I'm going to tell you how digital watch works. So here is a notepad, and uh, the the main the heart of one of these little. Uh, of any sort of quartz uh, clock is an is an oscillator which produces a frequency of exactly 32768 megahertz why that frequency well because it is a power of 2 if we feed the output signal of the oscillator into a 15 bit counter Then, uh, it then it then it will have fifteen outputs: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And uh, each one of these outputs, let's just say that this is the. Well, let's just say that this is bit zero and this is bit fourteen. So uh, each one of these. It, the signal coming into the oscillator, bit 0, will have the frequency of that signal divided by 2. And then bit 1 will have that frequency of the first bit divided by 2 again. So basically it divides each one of the frequencies by 2 15 times until the last uh, output bit has a frequency of exactly 1 hertz, which is the second beat that all of the clocks go through. And uh, after this, it goes uh, for one like this, then it would just go into a seconds timer, uh, a seconds counter, which decodes that signal and uh, translates it uh, into, some, into some binary signals for each one of those two segments. But they're in binary, and the, the seven-segment display has to have its own separate signals. So what we would do is send it uh, into, well, let's just say that each one of these wires is its own little thing and whatever. So it will have its own uh, seven-segment decoder, which will drive the two digits. And then the output of the seconds counter will go to a minutes counter. So that each time when the uh, when the counter overflows, it will trigger the minute counter, and then it has its own little seven segment decoder, and then it has all the and then it has the and and then it has its own uh, separate two displays. And then the uh, and then once the minutes counter reaches uh, sixty, when the minutes counter overflows, then it will trigger the hours counter, 
which has its own uh, separate seven segment decoder and its own uh, display. Although, um, for this one, this is a two digit display, uh, but it's more like two and a half digits because uh, you probably can't really see it. Maybe if I tilt it at just the right angle and use a little probe, you might be able to notice that there is a segment over there uh, that looks a bit like uh, this. That is just because it has both 12-hour tw and 24-hour options, and then in the space where the normal segment would be, there is a P for an AM and PM indicator. And uh, basically this one, uh, every time it... Uh, well, there is the 12 or 24-hour setting where uh, if it... Basically it triggers... It, it alternates between the different overflow modes uh, of 12 and 24. Uh, and then after that, because this is a very fancy digital watch, uh, it has its own uh, little day counter for the date, and then all of the, and then the year, and the day of the week even, and has some separate alarm stuff, which probably needs its own little microcontroller to do anything with. So if I was to open this up, I would probably see something like a little circuit board. Let's just say this is the circuit board with a black blob sitting in there. What that is is a chip on board, which means that the actual die, the chip, is glued directly on the board and it has little bond wires that go out to little pads. It's basically the cheapest way to get a chip onto a board, and it also has the advantage of um, of not being able to tell who what the chip actually is. And then I would probably also have a little metal can with two wires coming out, that would be the actual crystal uh, that determines the oscillation frequency. Just a teeny tiny quartz tuning fork inside of there with a resonant frequency of exactly 32,768 megahertz would be driven by circuitry from this chip. And then there would probably be a zebra strip on the other side that uh, connects via some traces to the, uh, to the LCD. Really, uh, stuff like this, digital watches, calipers, anything that has, uh, that has a LCD display as the output and buttons as the input doesn't really have much of anything interesting in terms of circuitry. So let's see if I can put this thing back together. As you can tell, uh, the watch, that's the watch cover, and I can just drop the watch module inside, like so. And now I can attach the piezoelectric lid. And I need to find my screws. So let's just one, two, three, and four. And uh, as I'm screwing this thing back together, I just want to say that. I don't even know why uh, why mechanical watches or even electromechanical watches that still use the uh, quartz oscillator but instead have a little solenoid that uh, triggers the uh, some mechanical mumbo jumbo that makes up the display. I genuinely do not understand why those exist because mechanical parts, especially small mechanical parts, uh, they they are extremely finicky and are I probably extremely hard to make while uh the chips that the chipsets in these uh in these cheap digital watches probably cost a few pennies to make because they're mass produced on an insane scale and I genuinely do not know why such watches exist why buy a nine thousand dollar Rolex when you can buy an eleven dollar Casio that does even more and with a much easier to read display and is probably also way less likely to fail because it doesn't have any sort of mechanical components in it. Well, minus the buttons, which aren't really mechanical in any sense. But uh looks like the watch has been Solidly screwed shut, and the piezoelectric beeper still works, right? Indeed it does.